Welcome to our Modern Playbook Roundtable. Uh, let's go around the table and introduce everyone. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, Rich Taylor, a.k.a. Dollar Bin Fodder. My hashtag is for Nico, honesty in comics. Hey, check out my subreddit. Um, it's been a little slow lately because I've been behind in school. You can find it under r slash new comic book day spec. I will have a new FOC list on there tomorrow morning. All right. Steve from My Bargain Comics. You can find us at My Bargain Comics on IG. I've started using IG again. I've got almost a thousand items in the eBay store. You can find that at My Bargain Comics. Even have a a website, www.mybargaincomics.com. But uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm ready to play. Nice. Right. Still with a lowercase s tonight. Yeah, I stuck with that. I don't know why. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Jessup. Uh, I go by the Half Price Crook. You can uh, you can check out my Instagram. Uh, it's Half Price Crook. I I'm on Facebook. I got something up there too. Or you can find me on Facebook under Jessup. I'm excited to be here. It's crazy, crazy times. I'm excited to play the. Uh, what did uh, what do we so call the game? Yeah, so I changed the title from Nico's Game to uh, Deal or Flipside. But uh, before nice. we start that, uh, I'm Aaron. Like um, I've, I've started a new podcast with Frank Gogol and Ant Arroyo called Comic Book Food Chain. And uh, you can find me on either or IG, Comic Book Food Chain, or <clears throat> Yeezy Yee. So, all right. Dude, this show was get... amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Top I mean, it was idea. Yeah, yeah, it was great having uh, John Boy Myers as our first guest. Like, so we'll see what happens for the next show, but it, it, it's gonna be something fun. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Cool. I love it already. All right, so let's go ahead and start our deal or flip sides. I wish I had like game music or something. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see. For our first two books tonight, we have Sunfire and Hero Six Number One at a CGC nine point eight. And Star Wars Hair to the Empire number one newsstand CGC 9.2. So before we start off, let me just list out some numbers real quick. So on the CGC census for Big Hero 6, there's a total of 81 at a 9.8. 212 are total graded. This is the uh, late or last cell at a 435. Uh, the 90-day average, though, is at 252. For Star Wars Hair to the Empire, the direct version has 166 9.8s, a total of 504 graded. But for the new stand census, there's a total of 74. And for the CGC copies at a 9.2, there's only 12. So the question to the panel is, at this price point, which one are you buying? Uh, let's start with Jessup. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna break my rule. Uh, I'm usually nine four and above, and I don't really like to get the nine fours. But I'm going with uh, Heir to the Empire at a nine two. It's a newsstand. I don't see the newsstands hanging around ever. Never seen one, and I don't know about the Sunfire thing. I mean, it, we, we all talked about the, the fuckery that was going on earlier with the Raws going for ten grand, right? Uh, that was weird. Uh, obviously, something's amuck there. Not sure what's going on. Yeah, 9-2, Air of the Empire, Financer. I think Thrawn will have a bigger impact than Big Hero 6, personally. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll go with Air to the Empire as well. The newsstand, I mean, Star Wars is just such a iconic property. You know, I know Sunfire and Big Hero 6 had its big day when, when the movie came out. I remember being on, you know, on the con floor and every dealer, I, don't, I forget when the movie came out, but er everyone had that up on the wall and then everyone forgot about it. And, you know, now lately with the um, TV series and then rumors about the MCU, it's popping again. I actually listed a copy today that I didn't even know that I had. Um, I try to keep a, a pretty tight inventory and inventory control, but somehow has escaped. So I, I put it up today because I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that the the current, I, I think this is a book that will continue to see 
uh, you know, ups and downs. You know, clearly Disney isn't finished with it. Maybe Marvel, Marvel may not be finished with it either. But um, you know, uh, Star Wars versus Big Hero Six. Star Wars wins, r regardless of the uh, of the uh, grade. Final answer. I what mean, do you think, Rich? Do you even have to ask me this question? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm going to pick? Of course, the newsstand. Now, let me tell you something I noticed about this. Uh, and the label, it says newsstand edition. Okay. I'd like to know. I want to see the notes to see when this was graded because as of December of 2020, CGC would not put newsstand on a modern book, newsstand edition, unless it was, of course, the Canadian price variant or it was a price variant. It was the only time you would see newsstand edition on a book that was a newsstand between, you know, in the in the modern age of 92 to, you know, whatever, 2017. I just checked. It is not a price variant. Uh, it's the same price as the direct. So this is interesting. I, I, I'm glad this came up. I would like to know if they maybe change their standards. But maybe there could be some kind of gray area because the direct doesn't even have – it doesn't have anything right here. And right. this, and then this has the new the new the UPC compared to most moderns around this time, it it has the box here with a UPC code the dot the distribution code like for Marvel it's always five nine six zero six blah 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 blah, and then when it's a newsstand it's the direct editions off it's usually all more it's bigger wider uh, skinnier. Uh, lines and the UPC and the right. SKU, and it usually starts with seven. So yeah, I'm 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 interested to find that out. So my final answer is definitely Star Wars: Heir to the Empire one, newsstand nine two. I would probably even take a nine zero, a nine zero or up for one reason. And Crook could feel me on this one. I don't care if somebody's it's been CPR five times. I'm still going to try to <laughs> try to bump that. Okay. Uh, at least, at, at least look into it. I'm at least going to look into it. But if I, I can't, it's just that, you know, these books are starting to finally get the attention of seasoned collectors and not, I wouldn't say niche or niche collectors, but just more serious collectors that are understanding that the money you put behind books is important because you're not just wasting your money. You're actually investing into something that you could probably turn into a profit or get your money back later. And they're starting to see that, Hey, you know what? These books that are not available or are very hard to find, especially these keys, these might be the ones that stick around here for a while, even if there is a bubble burst. And I think the newsstand is, is a uh, newsstand edition, especially with moderns are a, a key to that. So I think this is a great book. If I found this, I literally probably would pass out. You know, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, final answer, Star Wars, Newsstand, uh, Heir to the Empire, 9-2. And like I said, I would probably take a 9-0 over that book and up. Um, the one thing that does have going for it is the premium old label, but it's already a 9-8. What are you going to do, crack it, try to go for a 9-9? Don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, and and then with the uh, Star Wars Heir to the Empire, it does look like there's some text in the middle above the uh, the number. So I think it is counted in that newsstand census count. Well, it says on the label. I because I, I pulled it up on uh, eBay when you when you pulled it up when they were when Crook was uh, analyzing, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to see if it said newsstand edition on the label because because I've submitted. 12 newsstand books. I mean, I have a lot, but I, I've submitted 12 newsstand books so far. And I had, can't get, I cannot get one that has newsstand edition, even though I fill it out on the sub. Mm -hmm. I fill it out on the variant. Okay. Right. They don't, will not put it on there. And the last time that I, I subbed one was, it was Black Friday or like that weekend. And um, right after that weekend. So, Long story short, I look on this one and I look at the price. I, I look at, I see newsstand edition on there and I go, okay, well, it must be a price variant. And I look, it's not a price variant. So I'm really interested to find out A, when this was graded and B, if it was graded, you know, last year when they were only doing it for quote unquote 
price variance, putting the newsstand edition on there. I want to know if this book is uh, an exception. Is it because the UPC is on there and the direct isn't? I'm going to follow the crowd. Like I'm a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> like I don't care so much about Big Hero 6. So like I'm definitely going to pick up the newsstand Heir to the Empire. My rules of picking up CGC books, I'm fine with 9.2 or higher, just personally. But yeah, with the Sunfire and Big Hero 6, I guess I could potentially see room to grow a little bit on that. Who knows what we're going to see with Star Wars. I, I feel like Disney has a lot of big plans for it, so we can definitely see like what's going to happen. So I'm going to follow the crowd and pick Star Wars Heir to the Empire. Unanimous. Great yep. choice, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of also hard for me because, you know, I picked the books to, to present, so, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your, your opinion's important, though, still. Yeah, I want to know what you have to say. Yeah, yeah you're, a per you. you're, you're a person, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's or not a just robot. a host. Or just, or maybe a robot. <laughs> we'll never know. But anyways, okay. <laughs> so for our next section, we won the lottery. We have unlimited money to spend. Which book are you going to pick? So I'll say this, the books are gonna be big books over 10K a piece. All right, so this is what we have. We have the ultimate fallout number four, Dirjavik, okay. And then we have an amazing fantasy 15 <laughs> at a 3.0 for the same price, same source, heritage auctions, both selling at 14.4. Wow, this is great. This was a great one. Yeah, yeah. So I'll let yeah. I'll let Crook start this one. Go ahead, Crook. <laughs> I'm taking Miles. Wow. I oh. am. Um, let me fill in some uh, census data real quick. So, uh, ultimate Fallout Four at a nine eight. There's a total of uh, six hundred seventy six graded, and there's a hundred forty three for a nine eight. For Amazing Fantasy 15, there's a total of graded of 3,420. And on the CGC census, there's 254 uh, for a 3.0. Uh, none of that changes my mind. It, if anything, I think it, it'll start to, I think the market will start to lean more towards Miles as he goes in. I don't, I don't think Parker's over and done with, but I, I still want an Amazing Fantasy 15. Don't get me wrong, but I really want that that one in 25 miles i i passed up one uh it was probably like a, a 90 for like 375 bucks at one of the local shops in columbus and i'm still kicking myself because i'm like I, I yeah let me look at that i look at it and i'm like god this thing's beat 375 seemed like too much this was probably a year ago and now i wish i would have got it and I'm not going to see it again. I'm never going to see it again at that price. And at those prices, yeah, dude, I, I, I've got the utmost faith in Miles. I don't see it going down. It's only going to go up, in my opinion. Amazing fantasy at that. If I wanted one, I wouldn't want a 3-0, I guess, is where I'm saying. I, I hate Marvel shipping. And I think in the long run, I think Miles is going to surpass. What Wasn't Sean talking about uh, the other day, like uh, th those older books eventually are just going to deteriorate and turn to nothing? Uh, as paper tends to do like, yeah I mean I don't know a lot about paper I know enough about it to know that I would definitely take the night over the 3-0 that's just me <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you but all doesn't, disagree doesn't cheap plastic prevent, pre, uh, prevent it from doing disintegrating and uh, no I, I mean I don't know they, they put a what is the paper that they put is it uh I'm drawing a blank. What they put between uh, the chamber, cover and the micro chamber paper, micro chamber paper. Yeah, yeah. But uh, even even that has to be changed out. Um, it's not gonna. Yeah, I guess it all depends on the book. But it's three zero. Yeah, I. I don't know. I'd uh, I'd invest in miles right now if I were me. Final answer. All right. Well, f for this one, it's interesting because. Even even today, I, I have three or four of these Ultimate Fallout 9.8s, and I've had a lot more, and I think I've shared with you guys in the Hangouts the prices I've sold them for, either raw or graded in the past. I, I mean, I just was a combination of smart and lucky when these were in the five below bags, 
and I went nuts and I, I got a ton of them and, um, and I've still held on to, uh, the, those four, I think it's four, nine, eights. So it's something I've, I've had and I still have. And I, and I mean, I've seen it, you know, double, triple, quadruple, you know, over the years. I mean, I think the first nine, eight I sold was like less of the, of the variant, you know, it was, I think less, less than 200 bucks. So I've seen the appreciation over time and especially recently. And I think, I think it'll continue, but I'd probably go for the amazing fantasy 15, just maybe just to have something different. Most of my business is in modern comics and I, I, and it's only for the PC, you know, that I get involved in, in, silver and gold so you know I, I think they'll both keep appreciating i don't i don't know that they're mutually exclusive but yeah i it, i think it's just for me it's a personal decision maybe more than an investment decision you know i, I i'd pick up an amazing fantasy 3.0 because what am I going to do with one more ultimate fall at 39.8? I mean, yeah, I could, I could, I, I, maybe just for diversification purposes. Right? Nah. It's amazing fantasy. I get that. Yeah. Final answer. <laughs> Rich? Yeah, this one's uh, a tough one. Yeah, I have to admit. Wow. I mean, you guys know how I feel about Miles. Uh, the thing, the thing about Amazing Fantasy 15 is, a, is, is that I, I've already kind of accepted that I prob the probability is higher. Well, yeah, it, it's it's high that I probably will never own an amazing, at least a complete Amazing Fantasy 15. I might be able to find a coverless one at my comic shop or something for a grand or two. But uh, so if I own this book, I would be pretty pumped. I mean... Okay, so I'm looking at the book. It does present well, except for the chipping. That is a, that is a, that is a that is a part that is 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 bad about it. But to be honest with you, with how severe the chipping is on the right, and then how it kind of cuts off over here, it's almost pushing a three. I actually think that's like the probable. That was a push grade. That I mean that. They really, they really, I can't believe they got a 3-0, but it does present very well. And I think that's probably why the graders gave it a 3-0 over a 2-5, um, the presentation. The thing about uh, the fantasy, Amazing Fantasy 15, though, is, is that I don't think, you know, hey, we've seen Peter Parker, you know, this thing can only appreciate because it's a blue chip book, you know, based on current market situations. And Well, you got to also remember, you also have the first appearance of Flash Thompson in this book. You have the first appearance also of uh, Uncle uh, Uncle Ben, he, but unfortunately dies in this book. And then um, the first appearance of Aunt May in this book. And we're definitely going to be seeing Flash Ch Thompson, at least as a kid, you know, coming up. And then hopefully, you know, later as, you know, Agent Venom or what have you. Um, and then, we're, you know, Aunt May is played by uh, uh, Marissa Tomei, and she's great. So, you know, I see this book besides the fact that the blue chip uh, uh, appreciation, I still I still believe this book is going to see spikes. Miles, I mean, I am all in on Miles. I am all in. I do not own the uh, Georgievic, but uh, the thing is, is that I've owned <clears throat> and pressed at least 20. I, I used to say 30 or 40, but no, at least 20 copies of, of Ultimate Fallout 4 polybagged. And I mean, I've never had anything lower than, than a 9.6. No, I did have a 1.94. My friend uh, got a 9.4, but it was severely creased. But long story short, and then, you know, I, I do think he's going to go, you know, uh, far in the MCU or the Sony or if they work it. I don't know how that's all going to work out. But I mean, what happens if it doesn't work? And what happens if, uh, you know, the animation, they just end up sticking with the animation, which I, I don't think is, is going to happen. I, I, I think it's going to, there's going to go live action, but, uh, you know, I really haven't seen a good Peter Parker story yet, you know, and I'd like to get, I'd like to get a little better Peter Parker story as well. So, I mean, this is a tough call. And to be honest with you, I think I would rather go for the amazing fantasy, uh, 15 
and not just for the first appearance of Spider-Man, but also, you know, due to the fact that uh, there's some other solid first appearances in that book. And, and on top of that, that's the, that's the grail of all grails. A three O is very respectable. The thing presents. Well, I like it off white pages. It's not even cream. So yeah, I would take the amazing Fa fantasy 15 final answer. Yeah. So when I was picking pictures for this, it was kind of hard to find, you know, I found similar prices at a three O and they were all like 14, four, and this one actually presented the best out of all those. If you can believe it, that there was others with even more Marvel chipping, especially towards like the bottom corners, like where the bubble is, and then like even to the side where it looks like it's even missing like a giant chunk of it. If I'm not mistaken, I think they ease up on the Marvel chipping because it's it's known for these. Have you all heard that before? Yeah. 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 I definitely think this is an argument between, you know, are you picking the OG Spider-Man? <laughs> are you picking the new school Spider-Man? So, and I've heard like arguments of both going back and forth on this. And, you know, I think I'm gonna have to like, you know, kind of follow Mel's lead on this. I think Ultimate Fallout 4 still has room to grow. Like, I don't think we've seen the ceiling hit on it. Um, Who's lead? Je uh, uh, I, I missed that. You oh, out. Mighty Mel V. Like he, oh. he was talking about this the other night on Drunken Chat, or even on the Hot Hot Ten. He was saying that like it hasn't peaked out yet. Like it still has room to grow for Ultimate Fallout Four. I'm gonna have to go with the Ultimate Fallout Four one in twenty five. But I mean, you know, if the price is right, I'm not gonna pass up on the Amazing Fantasy Fifteen just because you know that's always gonna be a blue chip no matter what. But my final answer is Ultimate Fallout Four one in twenty five. All right. So for this next one, we're going to have to thank Steve for this. Uh, he was reading on the CGC boards one day a tr possible trade. So uh, the proposed trade was, they, the I believe, what was it? The user had a CGC 9.9 .9 Secret Wars 8, and they were in search of a Ultimate Fallout 4 9.8. So in this scenario, we're going to ask the panel, you have a CGC 9.9 .9 Secret Wars in your possession. Are you trading it for Ultimate Fallout 4? And then we'll take the flip side of it too. You are in possession of an Ultimate Fallout 4. Are you trading for a uh, Secret Wars 9 point? So for the numbers real quick, Secret Wars 8, 9.9, .9, there's a total grade of 17,386. For a blue label, there's a total of three thousand or thirteen thousand eight hundred ninety. For a nine point nine, there's twenty two. Wow, really? Uh, for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all in for, shock. Yeah, for Ultimate Fallout Four, uh, there's a total grade of nine thousand two hundred and twelve. For a blue label, there's eight thousand three hundred sixty five. And does anyone want to guess how many 9.8s are on the census? Um, am, am I back? Because it looked like I dropped off for a second. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah, back, yeah. you're back. I'm going to guess, uh, I'll throw out 2,000. Pretty close. 2,450. <laughs> guess how many 9.9s there are for Ultimate Fallout 4. One. Ten. One. Zero. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you mean there's off one with, yeah, go go for it. No, I said no. There's one right there. You said there's zero. There's you just showed a picture of one. No, so there's zero nine point nines for the ultimate Fallout Four. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you. Said... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's twenty two for uh, Secret Wars Eight of at a nine point nine. Okay. Yeah. So let's st start it off with Dollar Bin. You have the Secret Wars Eight. Are you trading for Ultimate Fallout 4? And let's yes. twist twist it up yes. for the scenario. Yes. You don't have I, I don't want to, I don't even want this 9 9. I don't even care. It doesn't even look like a 9 9. It looks like I've had so many copies of this book. I've pressed and cleaned at least probably 15 copies of this book. I've had four nine eights of this book. You see that? I, I don't know if, well, it might be the picture because that, that Ultimate Fallout 4 looks like a lenticular, but uh 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, the, <laughs> but the orange on the bottom of the Secret Wars looks like it's almost faded over here. I, I know it lightens up, but it usually it's it's usually more plush. Closer. Oh, to I'm, I'm sure that's one of the red copies because you know there's reds and oranges and and like the other other colors. But if it's a nine nine, I bet you that's one of those like you know the Hulk. 181s, you get a red one or an orange one. It's the same thing with the Secret Wars. The newsstands, at least the newsstands I've seen of that, are really like orangey, where some of them are really red, almost red looking. But if it's a 9 9, I bet you it's probably just the screenshot or whatever. That has to be brilliant red to yeah. be a 9 9. If not, I don't even know what else to say. Like that's, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I've had so many. I might even try to crack the nine nine to try to get a ten zero. Special experiment. I like your you know? bravery, right? Yeah. And, and build some content off that. You know, what's biggest the worst case scenario. <laughs> I'll get a nine. What's the worst case scenario? I'll get a nine eight. Well, I'll lose fifteen hundred. But um, uh, I I, I take miles nine eight uh, all day, every day, and on Sunday, and and. I'm I, I love this. I love that that's Mike Zek cover. Okay. I love the story. But the whole freaking spaghetti bowl between this book and, and Marvel Team Up 141 and ASM 252 and, and ASM 298 to 300. I mean, it's just like, just give me miles and let's just, you know. <laughs> final answer i'm i'm uh, yeah i'm i'm with i'm i'm with you rich and i'm not sure if aaron's asking me the same question but i'll take the same question and if you want i'll answer the reverse <laughs> as well but you know i i think nine nine is kind of a a niche market and you know probably um the folks that like nine nines and tens probably don't agree but but uh <laughs> I, I, you know, I think there's only certain books that I, that I want a nine, nine and like, like, I'll tell you my personal. So, you know, I, I was, I'm old enough, I guess, to, to remember when this came out in crisis on in infinite earth. And I actually do have a, a search that I get every day on crisis nine, nine. And that, that's one of the books I'd, I'd like to own a nine, nine, but cool. you know, that's that I have a personal conne connection to that, but there's not a whole lot of books that I'm like, oh, I really want a nine nine or a ten, right. and so, and and this book has been around, I, I'm, and we've seen the the price appreciation for Secret Wars or the lack of price appreciation, whereas you know, like I was just saying with Ultimate Fallout with the variant, you know, I've seen over the years um, how the variant has uh, again double doubled and doubled again and doubled again and doubled again and you know same same for this first print uh, it, it, it yeah uh, mel v is 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 right i mean i I, th I think the sky's the limit for ultimate fallout 4 and especially you know the first print like like rich said every day saturday sundays monday <laughs> tuesdays <laughs> yeah good answer jessup what are you thinking I'm telling the guy with the nine nine secret wars to go find somebody else. I want the miles book. <laughs> there, there were a ton of those secret wars books, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Fun. A yeah. ton. Nine nine doesn't really get my goat. I, I don't care. Like, I mean, do I wish everything I submitted got a nine nine? Of course. <laughs> but I, I think they're flukes. I think they're, I, I don't want to get conspiracy theorists, but yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't understand that grade necessarily. <laughs> I guarantee you, you could probably find a flaw in it. If you wanted to look and you wanted to dig and that's kind of a, like you, like you said, Steve, it's kind of a niche market or, or rich. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, you, you love it when it, you come back and you get one, but I would never want to trade anything to get one. I'll, I'll, I would take miles over that. You're right. It's convoluted with the, the, the black suit. Now, if there was a Secret Wars movie that we're going to see before I die, I'm glad you brought this up. That nine nine, you're going to make your money way over the miles. I would gamble to say. However, you said there were what twenty three of these in the census. Twenty two. Yeah. Twenty two. Yeah. I mean, odds are I'm not going to be first to market with my nine nine. So somebody's going to get all the money, and then everybody else is going to laugh at you know whoever bought it. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I don't know. 
Are, are you holding back on us at all, Aaron? Because I know I know sometimes you you like to do that. Are there? <laughs> it just occurred to me. Are there any tens in the census? So for Secret Wars, um, there are tens. Call, Steve. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. Yeah, but there is a ten, and um, I want to say it sold for like. 5,000 or something like that, or something crazy. I, I don't remember the exact number, but I remember wow. it was like way higher than where yeah, it wouldn't, I, where it wouldn't be comparable. It. There are actually four tens in the census. So yeah. these nine nines are practically worthless. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Sarcasm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. No, crack them, crack them and resubmit them. <laughs> yeah. I guess if it was a, a Canadian price variant, I probably would have a harder time choosing between the two because I, you know, I'm into that stuff. I probably would take miles though. Not, I, I'm looking at the census, the Canadian price variant, no nine nines or tens. Okay. Exist. Then I probably, I probably take the nine nine Canadian price. Yeah. So I have subbed a nine nine before. Oh, wow. Uh, through uh, CBCS. And it was a uh, Deadpool back in black. Number one, the Tyler Kirkham variant. And it actually has graders notes. So, what's what, it, what's it, it say? What's it, it say? says? Extremely minor edge wear. Like, <laughs> extremely minor. Yes. Yeah, so it that's the quote as the only like only what? note in there. Yeah. Did you did you spell ghost huh? immediately after you read that? I thought I thought it was hilarious. I was just like kind of like, I mean, I was so excited that I subbed a nine nine, like with no press, like on top of that. So. Um, you know, I was just hoping to hit a nine eight, and I was just like, kind of like, when I got back a nine nine, I was just like, kind of like, that's crazy. I'll probably never get it. It was, it was my first like grading submission. Wow. Ever. Well, congratulations. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm confused with the verbiage of extreme yeah. minor. <laughs> okay, so that's what I don't understand. Okay, so, so, so you know, <laughs> Rich is really having trouble with this. I, I'd be like. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so I just got pretty much the perfect grade or the, you know... The, Nothing the should be extreme. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Conspiracy <laughs> theories. Department of Truth. <laughs> Department of Truth. Department of, of CBC, uh, CGC. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we're foreshadowing, Susan. But, um, yeah, I don't own a, a Ultimate Fallout 4, and so if I was in possession of a Secret Wars 8, at a nine nine, you know, I probably would trade it. You know, from exactly from previously what we said before on the the last two comparisons. So yeah, I mean, I see a big potential of Miles, and then you know, it's this generation Spider Man, and then as those kids start getting expendable income, I could see them coming back and being like, "Hey, I wanted possession of a nine point eight Ultimate Fallout Four." Right now. Now, just as an interesting side note, before everyone goes, Steve made this whole thing up. So I, I use a, a RSS reader, which is really simple syndication reader. It allows you to read articles from websites um, in, in a sort of a quick fashion. Um, so uh, one thing I noticed, I was able to see this because I used the RS, RSS reader. Uh, but when I actually went to it, the post was removed. I think that's, you know, the CGC forums have rules uh, in, in the sale forums. So I'm not sure if you can uh, offer a trade. I think maybe that's why it got removed. So if you go to CGC looking for that post, it, it won't exist. Maybe it'll exist in Google's cache or something, but uh, but it, re it, re it really was a thing someone posted, but I, I guess they didn't follow the rules. Maybe it got maybe they got moved for the wanting to. I, I think there's a want to want to buy, want to trade form in the CGC. They put uh, boards, and maybe they moved it there. Don't know. Aaron, you're really good at that. Coming up with uh, mind blowing, oh. like because uh, you oh. dude, tears your heartstrings, like <laughs> amazing fantasy versus it. Oh my god, dude! Like yeah, that's why I love I, the game so much. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I just took Nico's idea and just kind of roll with it, and then like yeah. try to like like throughout the week, I think of comparisons, and then I also see what's going on currently in the market and what people are talking about. 
I mean, it definitely helps with the with the hangouts that we're in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it tugs yeah, at your heart. <laughs> so we have some uh, quick news from Steve about some uh, sure. eBay buyer requirements that you want to bring light to, you know, inform the community about. Sure, and and maybe we can make this a recurring feature because I know I, I see a lot of people have complaints about eBay, and um, you know, I've had a pretty I've had pretty you know good. Uh, good fortune with it and and not not too many i don't think as many complaints as some other folks so someone in our hangout you know was uh had a had a had a complaint i think it was about an unpaid item and i was like well have you set your fire requirements and i had about like five different suggestions so we'll just touch on this this uh just a couple of them tonight so if you're selling on eBay, go to the, there's a section, I think it's under site preferences and, and buyer preferences or seller preferences. Anyway, you do get this screen that, that Aaron um, has put up and what you can do is, and, and that you want to do, I don't know any reason of why you wouldn't want to do this. The first option is block buyers who have received a number of unpaid item strikes within a certain period of time. And I think the choices for unpaid item strikes are two, three, or four, and the months, I, I don't know what the choices are, but I would choose the least number of unpaid item strikes and the least amount of time just to filter out. You know, I, I think maybe this is how I avoid a lot of problems on eBay. I don't get too many unpaid items, and on another... Uh, on another time, we'll, we'll talk about another function of eBay that helps with unpaid items. But but you got to turn this on if you're selling on eBay. Otherwise, you're just asking for folks who uh, make a habit of not paying uh, and in either you know doing a best offer or in an auction scenario, you know bidding and then and not paying, which is just will you know drive you nuts. Uh, the second one is block buyers whose primary shipping address is in a location I don't ship to. I, I don't know why this is even why, you know, that, you, you know, that, that should just be that uh, a, a built in function of eBay. I'm not sure why they make you go and check a box for this, but they do. And if you don't, then I guess you can have someone in, you know, Yemen, and if you don't ship to to Yemen, they can still buy from you, uh, it, which you know that, that, that doesn't kind of yeah. weird too. Because like whenever you're setting up a post uh, for a sale, like you can uncheck that you don't ship internationally, right? So I don't know why that would be a preference that you would have to set also. Right. Like if you're already making the post, so it's not. And I don't know that you have to. Sometimes there's some inconsistencies in in eBay, yeah. but just to be just to cover cover your butt, I, I would check it. This other one I never use. I I guess if you have, I don't know why you would want to want to do this, but block buyers who are currently winning or bought uh, X number of items in the last ten days of my items. So it's like you almost want to prevent repeat customers. I mean, well, you know, I guess I envision this as, you know, we hear the common complaint of I, I went to a to a comic shop and they only let me buy one copy of the hot new comic book Wednesday book. And I, maybe there's some sellers on eBay who want to prevent that. You know, there's some similar scenario, but I I would never use this like, like the worst sellers ever on ebay would click that box <laughs> right 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 yeah in case, in case you don't like money right right All in right. case you don't like money ebay has a checkbox for you <laughs> so um so so hopefully we'll we'll come back um on this ebay topic because i i have a lot to share with people like i said i I've, I've been selling on ebay a long time uh one last note i'll leave you with I, I listen to the eBay for Business podcast, and that's they they drop those on Wednesday. I've learned a ton from that over the years about eBay functions that I don't know about, 
and they're also constantly changing. Uh, they just dropped their eBay uh, seller update for spring 2021, which has some changes in it. Uh, maybe we'll talk about next week or in the coming weeks. So, uh, yeah, if you want to do a lot with eBay, um, carve some time out in your drive or some other time and, and listen to that eBay for Business podcast. It's 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 worth a listen. You learn a lot. Great info, man. Yeah. I just made some notes. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then to listen to Steve. <laughs> Steve. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Yeah, Pre and then to all our person listeners, uh, let us know in the comment section and let us know like what kind of topics you would like us to discuss, like, or if you have questions, and then like we can probably address them at you know for the following week. So I mean, you know, uh, Nico pays attention to to all the comments, and I read them every so often. So you know, we have a lot of people in VMware, and I I I know Jessup like uh, replies to comments all the time too. Oh, I try. I try to watch them when when we go live because I I, I like to hear the feedback, man. I I have thick skin. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll take the heat. Yep. I don't mind. Yeah, I I always want to hear constructive criticism. Or criticism's fine if it's not constructive. I'll I'll, I'll just ignore <laughs> it. There, there's 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 been some really good things uh, brought up, and I think we'll uh, you know address them. Uh, in the future. And so for some news, we have, of course, the hot topic of this week, you know, Department of Truth getting optioned into a TV series. So I guess we just kind of wanted to discuss like what our thoughts of the, what the current issues are out and everything. Yeah. I got a quick question. Yep. <clears throat> how, how are they going to make this into a TV series? You know, no, like I imagine almost kind of like an X Files type of situation. It's so funny that you mentioned the X Files, Aaron, because uh, I was listening to an interview with with uh, Tinian earlier today, and you know he said that was a, a touchstone for him. He was an avid watcher, and he especially he wanted to become a cryptozoologist. If you remember some of those episodes when they were investigating animals that supposedly didn't exist, but uh, they were chasing down. Oh, yeah, and that was a great interview. Uh, I've only listened to part of it. Perhaps I, I you know, like I said, I, I'm only uh, two issues in. I, I started reading, I, I had a dig for my number ones. I had them in a different box than two through six. So I literally two hours ago, uh, in between doing other things, started reading in between doing other things, and I made it to issue two. But uh, with the Starface Man, I don't know how they would, because that seems like that's an important thing Eat to the, the story. I don't okay. Know. Bef okay, so I guess before we really deep dive into this baby conversation, good. <laughs> um, as you know, like I've been on this drunken chat, I'm sure like a couple of us. Uh, all been on this drunken chat. Uh, one of Mighty Mel V's new topics is Melcast. So what he says is he takes an option TV show and puts in who he would like to see to be the actor. So here's a couple of his picks. For uh, special agent Cole Turner, he chose Brad Pitt. For agent Ruby, he chose, sorry for mispronouncing this name, Zazi Beats. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Sweet. So, Already over budget. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah he, he definitely picked some movie stars to be uh, in a TV show. All bangers. And, for yeah. the, uh... So if we're going to go even crazier <laughs> over budget, he has <laughs> <laughs> Charles Dance as the Starface Man. And Scarlett Johansson as the woman in the red dress. Double down. Yeah, no one, no one can cast them like Mel V. I mean, these yeah. are these are spot on. Yeah. Who Absolutely. does Mel? Who does Mel? Um, who would Mel cast for the babies that get eaten? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that, might be, that might have to be like CGI or something like that. Right. But I also want to give out a shout out to uh, Eric Hurd 
rookie of the year for speculation for helping um mighty mel v uh make up these slides oh yeah those are nice th th those are great picks i mean nothing i can ar argue with there i can't think of any one better yeah yeah so i mean I mean, you know, just to get the conversation kind of rolling of like, who would you cast for these things, for, for these different characters? And then, but I mean, yeah, I, I feel like each episode you could do a different subject, like kind of like each comic issue is kind of like an episode. Right. Um, yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it, has to, it has to be Go ahead. Motion, major motion picture and it's got to be rated R or I don't see how it's going to work. Uh, uh I, I'm by no means have any background in, in production of anything, but, and perhaps it, it, it takes a, you know, it, it spirals down a little bit and it's not as what I think it's going to be from issue one and two, but wow. Uh, I, I don't see how this, even if it goes X-Files, I don't understand how this is ever going to make it to television, how it, how it reads in the comics. Well, so far. I I'm not. I'm not sure that it's that much of a reach. I mean, I mean, you don't have to have the the the, the babies. I mean, and they can do things with CGI. You know, like the the end of the Earth. You know, the flat Earth. I'm not. What, oh, what, sure, what, sure. What, what do you, what, what do you think is like the the hardest part about bringing it to the screen? Pretty much the the cannibalism with the Starface Man and. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The, the dreams that Cole's having and or if it's not a dream or if it's a, like, you know, a very traumatic experience, he only remembers so much. Right. Like that would be, cause that seems important thus far. I'm assuming I'm going to get, I, I'll read it tonight when I'm, I'm done. I, I had a lot on my plate today, so I didn't get to finish it, but I made it my goal and made it the issue too. Right. So, so I'll give a little bit of background from this uh, interview. Uh, well, first of all, let me start off by saying, you know, I love Department of Truth. I love Department of the Truth the way other people love Tinian's other, you know, indie hot book, you know, Something is Killing the Children. I mean, I, I, I think Department of Truth is one of the best indie titles that I've I've read in, in years. Um, it, it really captures the zeitgeist uh, of the time. So let me just share a couple a couple things. Um, so I found it interesting. He said he watches JFK way too often, um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know we've seen him touch on that in the book. And you know, if you if you haven't read it, I, I am going to give away the spoiler for the end of the first issue, the big reveal. So I'll pause a couple seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're done. Um, so Lee Harvey Oswald uh, is, is the director of the Department of Truth. So, and they haven't really touched too much on how that came to be, but it was really interesting because this uh, interview with Tinian was recorded, um, I think before the release of the first issue, I think it was like August or September. Yeah. And, and, and he says he's really interested in, you know, the interviewer asked him how he picked uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, where did that come from? And he's, and Tinian's really into um, reading about, you know, c conspiracies. And like I said, um, and, uh, you know, likes that JFK movie. Um, but I, I guess there's something called the many Oswalds theory in real life. Um, so apparently, you know, if, if you're into JFK, the JFK assassination and the conspiracy theories, there are elements that make it seem like Lee Harvey Oswald was everywhere leading up to the assassination. And then there's pictures that show him at, at different places, but then you go like, ah, the picture doesn't really look like him. So one of the key re reveals in the first issue is that new realities can manifest themselves just by people believing in them. Right. And, um, Lee and the and the idea about Lee Harvey Os Oswald being the director of the Department of Truth uh, mm -hmm. it will be central to the question of how far can manifesting new realities go. So the question 
he he provide he he offers is is the is the man is the Oswald running the department an actual person who existed prior to the JFK assassination, or is Oswald in the book someone who was created after the event, after people started believing in the many Oswald theories? So is he real or is he not real? And depending on how that question is answered, does that change his agenda, uh, you know, running the Department of Truth? So that was kind of mind blowing to me because I never mm. like even thought I'm like, OK, this is just a fictional, you know, um, turn that he decided to have Oswald. I hadn't really given much thought to you know, okay, how did he become the director? Or even, you know, which Oswald is he? So that's just something else to think about on top of all the other questions the book raises. Yeah, and then th that interview was great too because I think the person interviewing Tanya and I believe the artist. Um, I think it was the letterer. It was the letterer? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure how the interviewer had read the first two issues yes and then and he was like oh it's so incredibly dark and all this and then like the letter was like you think the first two issues are dark wait until you read the third issue like, <laughs> and, and then yeah and then he goes on to like explain like his idea that of how the if so many people believe into these conspiracy theories that it's a danger to society of like of how it shows modern relevance into this so personally i think it'd be hard to like stitch together as a movie like to make all the different stories because yes like, i think uh, so because they go like in so many directions and it doesn't actually pick up from like a set <clears throat> time period right. so i think it would make more sense to be a episode case by case kind of like how x files did where it's like it's this date and year and then I could see that the Department of Truth kind of doing the same thing. And if they want to pick back up on a topic, it would go back to that. Sure. Like, like, like on a Netflix, a Netflix uh, or an Amazon type of thing where it could be, you know, uh, not a NBC, ABC or CBS type of show, but right. definitely it has to be monitored f from children. I mean, you, 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 I probably wouldn't let my kids watch it. I wouldn't let my kid read it. At least like the young one. Like absolutely, the the, the teenagers have at it. Like I can't wait to talk to them about it. Like uh, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna read the rest of them with Nicole later. Um, we were supposed to read them together, but it didn't pan out because uh, she's definitely interested too. But if this was a movie and they made like you know three or four sequels to, I mean, people would be foaming at the bit. Hmm. Uh, you, how many people follow like uh, uh, who's the uh, who's the crazy guy that Joe Rogan always makes fun of? Uh, oh, Alex Jones. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. Like, people would be beaten beaten down the theater doors to get in to see something like this. Like, as much as dude, I love conspiracy theories. I love Alex Jones. I, I mean, no, I don't think he's right, but I. I I, I love it for an entertainment standpoint. Fantastic. I love conspiracy theories. I don't believe them, but I, 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 I have a thing for them. I, I, they're fantastic. Yeah. And then, so, and I yeah, completely that, agree that, that like, ever. Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, I completely agree that Tynion's killing it with these indie titles, Batman, like, so, I mean, like, Wait, he has two of the hottest indie titles right now, the Department of Truth and Something is Killing the Children. I mean, he's absolutely killing it with his writing. So I know some people are a little bit worried. I know Nico expressed this uh, last week. I think we were talking backstage about, you know, are, are they going to keep Simons as as the artist? And, and you know, Simons is, is the guy who's doing ba basically his best uh, Sinkovich, uh, Dave McKean, uh, you know, impression and and you know, as a, as a kid, I, I never understood that type of work, uh, artwork. But as uh, at the age I am now, like I, I can appreciate it and actually you know follow it and 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 like it. So I know Nico was worried about issue six, which uses a totally different art style and a totally different artist. 
So what, what Tinian said about issue six was that that every like five issue arc, they're going to have uh, one of these. I, I want, I'm trying to find it. Oh, in between every five issue arc, he, he wants to show different facets of the world, almost like we're focused on the Department of Truth in the in the U.S., but there's Department of Truth other places throughout time. And and um, just a little bit spoilery about issue six. It revolves around what he says is one of his favorite conspiracy theories, which is the the church's. Uh, it's called the Phantom Time hypothesis, hypothesis, and it's the theory that the church put the fall of Rome further in the past than it actually was, so that the calendar today, if we were using the actual time that was not interfered with by the church, this would be 1750 rather than 2021, um, oh, which wow. really, in my mind, doesn't really, I, I don't I don't know all the changes that take place because it, it's still the passage of, of time. It's not like we'd be living in 1750. It's just we'd have a different date. But I probably haven't thought enough through, uh, through it to really think about it. But uh, his point was, he wanted to show how how, um, how do organizations weaponize history to shape their own realities. So I, I guess going back to what I started with is, don't worry, issue six, and I believe issue seven also <clears throat> are these interludes. But I know by looking at the solids on Diamond and everything, back, by issue eight, everything's back to uh, normal with, uh, you know, set in the present with the art style that we have issues one through five. Oh, and then I want to give a big shout out to Ben, Mr. Longshort, that was, he was talking about how the secret variant for issue one is completely insane now. Awesome. of Because you have Oswald on the cover instead of JFK. Right. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I think he mentioned right? huh? Actually, I, I actually I think it was me that was talking about that with the uh, with uh, in the hangouts and uh, and that book went from like a fifteen twenty dollar book to about a hundred and twenty dollar book. <laughs> okay. And it posted the sales and uh, uh, Ben yeah, said that he that. thought it he thought it was no no but Ben Ben I me and Ben were on that book at um, right after FOC and we found there was an article and I think it was bleeding cool cool. Uh, he read it that morning, and I read it, and then we started. I think uh, we just ended up started uh, talking about it the week of release, and he's like, "Yeah, that secret variant." I was like, "Yeah, I heard about that." So I went to my comic shop, and uh, you know, my comic shop. So uh, they're not affiliated with us; they don't sponsor us, but I, I like them a lot. So I'll go ahead and uh, give them kudos. But uh, they, what's cool about them on their new releases? And mo and most titles is they show every single cover, even if they're not going to uh, carry it or they ordered it, show every single cover. So, so the secret variant when we saw it, it was it was selling for between eight and twelve bucks, and there were there was like six of them there. So I grabbed a couple. I think he grabbed a couple, and I I didn't think anything of it because secret variants are are tricky. They're very tricky. And at first I couldn't tell the difference. I didn't even understand. I, I was like, I can't even tell the difference. He's like, dude, it's Oswald. I was like, oh yeah, it's Oswald. Duh. So long story short, I go and I checked eBay the other day uh, for the number two, uh, one in 25 with the uh, star face man eating the baby to see, how, okay, how crazy is it right now? And then I go, you know, I'm going to check the secret variant and I'm seeing like all these sales of it, like, I mean, there was a bunch of listings on there too. All these sales for between six fifty, sixty up to one hundred twenty dollars, nine eight selling for uh, above that, and there was only like like three listings left. So I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I posted it in the Hangouts. So yeah, that's uh, that was that's really interesting. And 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 I think Dino was the one that brought this up about secret variants, and he made a good point uh, earlier in the week in the Hangout. They're tricky. I mean, you know, you think you got something. And, you know, it ends up just end up being a $5 book a week later, you know, or I mean, I'm sorry, a year later, but uh, some of them, they pop 
and this one pop. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll have um, hopefully next week. I'll I'll have some really cool Department of Truth variants to show, but I, I don't I don't want to spoil that. But it'll be interesting as we get into the printings. And and hopefully this series will will stay hot because th they're going into multiple printings. I believe last week was FOC for the fourth printing of issue number one, which yeah. I I I I I liked. It was a uh, it was a recolor, but it was just a grayscale uh, of the first uh, first one. I, I kind of like that. Now it's going to be too late when. Uh, when when this is released, but FOC ending on Monday the eighth. Monday the eighth, uh, the number two second or the number two third printing right. is on FOC, um, which is the which uh, I believe Mel, Mighty Mel V pointed out as the first Starface man. I think that maybe didn't make the cut in a previous top ten, but was a, a fantastic observation. Um, number three, third printing is on uh, FOC, and number six, second, second printing. printing. Yes. Yeah. So, and then um, even issue seven is also on FOC. You're, that's correct. Both both yeah. covers A and B. Let's see. I'm looking at boss, the yeah. Boss is, boss is doing cover B, so that's that's going to be a good cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It, yeah. It and it's yeah. It's very different. It's a like. The red, uh, what are we calling her? The, the lady in the red dress? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Standing next to a cow, utters exposed. <laughs> that, 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 I don't know uh, yeah. wh what that actually meant, but it's just kind of weird. You know, you do, when you see a picture of a cow, you don't always just, you know, see uh, <laughs> it. Oh, uh, and it, I, I love in the storyline, like when they talk about the lady in the red dress and how she's missing her eyes and everything. And then it just it keeps on digging more and more into that throughout the story. It just doesn't talk about it in one issue. You learn about her in each issue, and it's just like kind of like yes, like I want to know more though. <laughs> right. right, right, yeah. It's a it's a fantastic um, series. I I wouldn't be surprised to see number one go to. I don't think this fourth print will be be the last. And there's some rare store variants. Um, I know there's a third eye variant. I think that there was only 500 copies of. Um, yeah. I really yeah. like the uh, proof, proof of concept variant where it has JFK with the marked out eyes and it's like uh, on the grayscale. Okay. Which was that a store variant or? I'm not sure if it was a store variant or I, I know it's pretty low print account and huh. I, yeah, but I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I've only seen it a handful of times. Interesting. Yeah. But uh yeah, he he he, he uh, Tinian really loves uh, this book. I, I was, I, you know, I think the the biggest danger, you know, he talked about having to handle Batman and you know three other series because he also has uh, Win W Y N D. Right. Um, and I think his uh, DC contract it sounded like that limits him. That's like the maximum number of other books he can be working on. And you know, I was kind of worried, like, okay, what if Department of Truth ends with issue? 12 but i don't know i feel like he has so much love uh for, for this topic and that it had been in his head for a while that uh it, it it'll continue is timmy and writing uh writing uh, house of slaughter that's a good question um i don't know if we know that yet i don't think that there's been any solets uh for that one all right i uh, i know it's getting pretty late for everyone so uh, let's go ahead and kind of end things here, but thank you for tuning in. Uh, catch us next week for tells from the flip side.